Let's create a planet with a day-night material and atmosphere, all procedurally created and generated within Blender using nothing but the uh, shader editor. And you can fully customize and control everything about this. So although I'm gonna be making it in a one specific way, you can change all the colors and settings to be exactly what you wanna do to create the planet that is right for you. If you wanna save some time on this tutorial, a link to download this file from Gumroad is in the description below if you want to head down there. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing and give the video a like if you find this helpful. Let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you want to see a tutorial on. So you'll see that the shader we've got here, we can, wherever we move the light, it will actually uh, apply the night, the nighttime texture to one side of it and the daytime to the other side. How do we do this? Let's take a look. So first of all, we're going to make a uh, new scene, go into the shading panel. First things first, we're going to need a uh, planet looking object obviously a cube doesn't do that so let's add a icosphere not a uv sphere an icosphere and on the subdivisions just bring that up to five is is, is fine make sure we set that to shade smooth and on the uh, on the scene settings let's turn bloom and ambient occlusion on uh, ambient occlusion is not too much of a, of a thing but uh, uh let's do it let's do it go into the rendered view Bring the world's strength down to zero, so it's pitch black space, because this will allow us to see uh, exactly where the light is hitting. Also, it's a planet, it's in space. There is no bounce lighting in space. Let's create a new material, name it Planet. This is gonna be the uh, base setup for our uh, material. So let's start off, and we're just gonna make the base material for our planet. So with this principled BSDF, we're gonna create a Musgrave texture and a color ramp. Connect the Musgrave to the color ramp, put that into the uh, base color. Just play around with the settings on the Musgrave, the scale, detail, dimension, lunar veracity. I still don't know how to say that word. This is completely up to you on how you want your, your planet to look. If you want sort of larger scale bits of landmass, or if you want the uh, the whole thing to be just caked in rock, um, you can completely change. That's up to you. And on this color ramp, we can now change uh, how much of of each side of that texture is going to be there, how much that detail is coming through, you can change the color. Now this is a sci-fi planet, so we're not going to necessarily make it look exactly like Earth, so let's add a sort of brownish tint to it and uh, change the uh, white value to almost like a cream. And if we plug the color ramp into a bump node to connect that to the normal, we'll start to get a little bit of height, you can see that on, on the planet. Obviously from space we're not going to see the full height of these mountains, so we want to bring this strength and distance really really low down just so there's a, a tiny bit of definition so it separates from the base of the uh, the ocean but but not too much because you know we're talking kilometers in scale relatively we're not going to see that this height is coming out too much i'm just going to play around the colors a bit more i'm actually tempted to go into a sort of a more tealish blue so it's not quite natural how you would see on earth but it's a little bit different and obviously the landmass kind of looks like a snowy planet that's Hoth. Let's call it Hoth. Cool. So we've got our sort of base material. Now we're going to add the atmosphere. I'm going to blast through this quite quickly. So uh, do pay attention. I'm going to add a diffuse shader, converter, shader to RGB, converter, color ramp, color, mix RGB, input, Fresnel. It's not Fresnel, it's Fresnel. Converter, another color ramp. And lastly, a inverter and a uh, an add shader. And lastly, a shader and an emission. Right, now let's connect all of these up. Diffuse to shader, color to color ramp, and the color ramp of this first one into the factor. And the Fresnel is going to go into the bottom of our mix shader and bring color one to black. Now this mix shader is going to go into the color of the color ramp, color of the color ramp, into the top of our add shader and actually switch this to be multiply. The value of this multiply is now going to go into the strength of our emission. And there we go. Whew. You can't really see it yet, but let's plug it in. This is basically going to create our atmosphere. If we plug that in, there we go. Boom. Now what we can do now using these two color ramps, we can change just how much of this atmosphere we want to see. This first one will sort of create the uh, just how much is there. And if we use this multiply value, what we're doing is we can just really increase the glow of that without having to change too much more and use the color ramps to change the value of the mask basically. Lastly is just do an add shader because we want to just add this top atmosphere on top of the material below. And there we go, we've got our atmosphere. If we change the color here, you can really see that the glow 
supplying as it should. We can maybe bring the value up here. Now we've got our material underneath. And just play around with that mask on the color ramp. And again, this is completely up to you. If you want to go full on over the top sci-fi, really boost that as much as you want. Bring the atmosphere, wrap it around as much as possible. Change the color to be whatever you want, a super sci-fi color. And there you go. Kind of got the basic of our, our ring atmosphere. And that's using the Fresnel node, a bit of, I guess, a bit of the science of it. The Fresnel node is basically the ring around the material, uh, the way the light's hitting it. And obviously, because it's a sphere, we're basically masking that out and only applying this to the side. Uh, this shader to RGB node as well, what that's doing is basically uh, telling our material that where there's light to apply this. Now, we're actually going to use these same nodes, the same theory to apply our nighttime texture on the other side, because if this shader to RGB node is basically saying using the light in the scene as a mask, well, we want to reverse this, right? We're saying that the atmosphere wants to appear on the side with light, or we want a nighttime shader to appear on the side without light. To duplicate this diffuse shader to RGB and color ramp node, and add a multiply node in as well, and a mix RGB. Just connect those up, and put the multiply into the factor. So that's basically our mask that we've got. Now all we're going to do is create what will be our nighttime texture, I guess. So to do this, I'm going to use a Musgrave texture and a Voronoi texture, duplicate this mix RGB node, connect the height of the Musgrave texture into the factor of the mix and the Voronoi texture into color two. So this is basically going to use the shape of the Musgrave and the detail of the Voronoi texture. And if we connect this mix shader into the color one of the second mix shader, and connect this second mix shader into our emission, you'll see that this is now applying to the dark side of our sphere. That doesn't look great, doesn't look great. So what we're going to do is just add a color ramp in between this, these two mix shaders here. And don't forget to change this second mix shader actually to multiply. That's a key point there. Now on this, uh, this, this other multiply node, if we increase the value, you'll see that we're going to crush this mask down. If we change our light in the scene to be a sun as well. So it's not just a, a point light, it's an actual sun. We rotate this around a little bit. Let's go back to our Musgrave texture. And again, play around with the scale of that. Switch it to 4D actually on both the Musgrave and Voronoi texture. And again, this is now on you to sort of uh, decide how how you want the uh, the darker side of your, your planet to look. We're actually seeing way too much light. So if we go into this color ramp that we've added and just bring the black value up. So we're crushing it, making the, the light a bit smaller and change the white value, which is basically our color, to be a sort of a, you know, a brownie orange color and actually bring the brightness of that down. So it's very subtle. I'm gonna go back to our Musgrave texture and just bring that scale down so that it creates the illusions of larger cities as opposed to tiny, tiny settlements everywhere. If we just play around with this value on the multiplier a little bit more to blend that in and just use that color out to really crush it. Give the, just give the slight illusion that there's lights because it's not gonna be super duper bright from space, but just, something so that on that darker side of the planet you do get that hint that there are light sources because it's not going to be glaringly bright it's not it's not going to be brighter than the sun bouncing off the earth but you just want to see something so actually let's bring that brown down even more and, uh, and, and there you go i mean that that's pretty much it really this is all up to you now to just play around with the materials play around with the scale the detail the colors of both your main planet texture and your nighttime texture you know we can change this to be green to look more like an earth earthy type planet or we go completely crazy with it and if we go for sort of more of a purpley looking planet and change the emission of that to be a, a like a purple color we're gonna get this nice little sci-fi looking alien world and that's completely up to you on how you want to change the planet to look how you want it to be cool we can make this planet now without the question mark and there you go, you've got your planet in space with, with our base material on one side and our nighttime material on the other. As I say, fully customizable, fully controllable, and it just looks really, really nice sitting there in the, uh, the black vacuum of space. Now, wherever you move your light source, it's gonna the material will update correctly. You will see the nighttime texture on one side and you will see your base material and the atmosphere on the other. That's it, thanks so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video and it was helpful, please give it a like and subscribe for more content like this in the future. As I say, there is a Gumroad link to this down in the description below if you want to head to there and uh, just support the channel in any way. 
that would be really helpful. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.